Are, are you I recording mean, right now? I think I follow him on Instagram. Oh. Uh, let's start over. Was that good? Are we just running it? No. No, 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 that was not the intro. Let's just start now right that, now. Now that Ryan's that editing, editing, I'm like, no, no, that is not the <laughs> intro. We're starting over. I want to clean cut. in the game and the way it gets filmed. And <laughs> We're just like, Ryan, why don't you intro it for us since you'll be editing yeah. it? Yeah, intro us in, Ryan. All right, I think you can do that. Do it. Do, do it. it. You're going to love it, I promise. Ooh. Do it. All right, guys, welcome back to the Wide Open Podcast with uh, C-Boys TV. You We're didn't here. even get the name right. Fuck. Life Wide Open Podcast. Oh, oh I thought you go. said Wide Open. He did. No, the Life heard, Wide Open Podcast. Okay. I heard Wide Open Podcast, too. <laughs> I think I might have stuttered on life. Play it back, Jamie. He said, he said Wide Open Podcast. Yeah. Idiot! Sorry. Damn, dude. I didn't mean Jamie it. knows all. Well, everyone has ears heard that you said <laughs> it wrong, but <laughs> Ryan, you've come a long ways mm-hmm. from the first podcast, and now you're introing. Now I'm introing. I'm I still mean, f***ing it up. <laughs> <laughs> Man, chase your dreams, kids. Yeah, welcome back, you Even if back, your you friends guys. make you do it. <laughs> It's a rainy Saturday today. We were supposed to go golfing, actually. But real golfing. Yeah, not not <laughs> reckless golfing, as you guys just saw in our latest video. It was going to turn into reckless golfing, but we already know would've... that. Yeah, but to an extent. It like... wasn't going to be nearly as reckless as the video, though. Because we, w- we were showing up to play. I don't yeah. know, man. When I we think were f- it might have. When I we mean... were filming the video, we showed up and we were like, we're here to fuck around. We're probably going to get thrown off. It's going to be cut short. It wasn't a real game. That was the goal. But today, I mean, if it wasn't raining, we were going to show up and, like, compete. Yeah, but all of the boys would have been here today. And it's like, you know, every time we talk about when we get the entire squad together, things escalate so fast, and there's no way that we wouldn't have gotten out of control. I'm not especially saying... To the fact that, especially to the fact that we weren't filming it, so we were like, <laughs> we were just like, Probably getting into the booze a little bit. Man, every single... Uh, you guys think we're alcoholics out here, but we just talk about it a lot. But, you know, we probably would start boozing a little bit, and then things would have escalated. Only to the extent of everything reckless except for wrecking a golf cart. I don't know if That's Micah would have drove a yeah, golf exactly. cart off a retaining wall again. If we had to... If we we, we would have gone out without If that. we were leaving that golf course and had to buy another golf cart, I would have been, even filming? I been alarmed. <laughs> I would have been like, okay, maybe we, golfing is not for us. I didn't realize how much fun golf was. I know. I thought it was just kind of like a thing that old guy, old men did. Dude, But I it's know. fun. I hear about it all the time. All my, all my girlfriends, friends, boyfriends, and husbands, that's what they do on Saturdays and Sundays. I'm like, huh, sounds kind of boring. Mm-mm. Turns out no. it's a blast. It's a <laughs> blast. And it's we're blast. not even good at it. Except it, for Ben. Eh, Ben's not that good. Don't pump his tires. <laughs> He's literally 30 times better than I am. Well, it's not that hard to be better than you, <laughs> No, Mike. it's not. Mike, you literally Mike, break a club being, every time bro, you go. For being, what did you play? High school golf, right? That for being in high school no, golf, you did. that You got to be hands down the worst golfer I have ever seen. I played That's my a, senior That would consider himself board. a golfer. Were you on the special ed team or what? <laughs> if they had one, I would have been. Bro, <laughs> I've never seen somebody shank so many balls. Like, at least making contact, and if you have a, just a gnarly slice or a gnarly hook and it's not going in the fairway, that's one thing. But the fact that you can't even make contact with the golf ball with the face of the club and it might go just straight right or it might go in between your... It went between your legs at one point. It went backwards mm-hmm. multiple times. Like, mm-hmm. it's seriously a safety hazard to golf with my God, dude. It is. You don't know where to stand. You don't know where to stand. You don't stand. know where to stand. It's you don't okay. know where it's going. It's okay. At least you can drive the golf cart. Wait, don't you can. <laughs> That's He's a, true. The best he golf cart driver I heavy know. on that don't video with the golf cart. Don't you want to stand in... Oh, yeah, you're right. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> but you stand in front of the golf ball. You want us to stand in front no, of it, you or like, you stand? In front you of don't know where to stand. Safe. I'm like, you just put it between the two white markers, and then you stand in front of the golf ball. Not you, us, oh. idiot. <laughs> I'm like, bro, I know where to stand. Yeah, well, definitely stand behind me. You, you guys act like the ball. That one ball that went behind me, like, if it hit you in the shin, you go ah, and then that's it. Like, Bruh, there was a couple ones. Bro, that I saw them with my eyes. <laughs> you could have killed somebody. <laughs> right, you would have been a. If your Pussy. club, the way it was, like, fucking the head of it, you'd every time you'd swing. You'd like a fragile, fragile little baby for me to kill you with that. <laughs> I don't think most people are trying to get smoked by a golf ball off of the tee. There's That's still saying, some, like, I don't there's think some there's, heat behind them. Yeah, but, yeah, not really. When you hear Micah's, uh, like, ratio to clubs broken to rounds played, it's one for one. It, every every round of golf you play, you break a club. And if you didn't know Micah, and I was just telling you, yeah, my friend Micah he breaks a, a <laughs> golf club every time he plays, 
you'd probably think he's just this jacked, strong guy that's just smashing the balls. My nope. brain would go more towards like angry. <laughs> oh yeah, he's got a real yeah. anger problem. Oh, he's I'll got a temper. Maybe that too. Snapping him over his Qu- leg. Both of them quite the opposite. So yeah, if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. We've actually been doing a really good job lately, knocking mm. out the podcast. Try and do one a week. We still don't have the best schedule for it, so if you guys are watching this, just hit the notification bell because we sometimes post Tuesdays, sometimes post Wednesdays, sometimes, sometimes post Thursday. Thursday mornings. I'm doing my best out here, okay? I'm sorry. Ryan's yeah. killing it on the yeah. edits, dude. The beauty We're of still the podcast is that you can like you could listen to one from three weeks ago, and you it's can. still relatively relevant. But yeah, no, we've been killing on the uploads. We've been doing the podcast, been rolling, and then on top of that, we just had a merch drop. It's Saturday. We dropped the merch drop on Thursday, so it's been about a little over 24 hours. It was probably mm-hmm. one of our top merch drops, mm-hmm. and it's still going. It's still going. The yeah, the, the giveaway pit bike is, that's, uh, I don't know. People it's are dialed. stoked for it. I mean, it's that, but also I, I think it has a lot to do with the merch. Like, the jerseys, they're sold out. Fire. There was a lot. There was and, a lot of cool stuff on this drop, for sure. And, I mean, there was a lot of jerseys, and they that's went <laughs> so quick, so quick. We had two variations. It's just amazing. So yeah. thank you guys so much for and that. Speaking of the merch shop, we got a duffel full of uh, all the new merch going to Cat- Caswell Customs. We yeah. announced last merch shop or last podcast that we were going to be giving away a full line. Um, so yeah, Caswell Customs. We're going to send you a DM. We're going to send you get your size, and then we're going to send you a little care package. So what do you guys attribute the success of this last merch drop to? Everything. I mean. I'd like to give a good amount of credit to Mike on the designs, but also like I'll come up with an idea. I think the the dare no can do was that mine? That was mine, right? Mm-hmm. And like the, I kind of came up with it. And I just I tell Mike about it, right? And he makes it happen. He comes to me and he has it, and it just it looks right. It's like whenever you come up with an idea, which all of us do, we all we all tell Micah. He makes it happen. Then we have this meeting. We look it all over, and this is you know a month before you guys ever see it. And we go, hmm, change that, or that looks golden. Maybe change this a little bit, tweak this, or all oh, this looks great. And then it, it just all comes together so good. But then also I think, you know, it has to do with everybody just being entertaining, staying on their shit, working hard, and and staying consistent. And obviously you guys buying it too. Which like, and, I, exactly. I mean, that's why I'm like almost quiet about it. I'm just like silently stoked for like – Literally, it's just unreal. I mean, thousands of people being like, I like that. I want to buy it. Right. I know some people do just to get entered, but I know a lot of people do just because they want it, which is the best. You know, what's just crazy to me when we like when we go and we do a meetup. Right. And I stand in line t- or I stand at our booth and I take pictures for like seven hours. Right. And you just have people just rolling in, rolling in. And uh, you're taking pictures you're like, holy shit, dude, we've got to be making so many sales and like there's just so many people here and you get to the end of the day and you like see how many you sold and you're like i mean you're not mad but you're like oh i thought we would have sold a lot more than that and then compared to a merch drop when it's just like instant puts perspective to the masses exactly of people that like can get to you on the internet yeah like if you put yeah. all the people if you put the three hundred thousand people that have already watched the video in a room Mm-hmm. You'd be like, holy, oh, this right? Is, I mean, that's, I, a, that's a stadium. Yeah. That's more than a stadium. Yeah. I don't think there is stadiums. It's like two stadiums put together. Exactly. Yeah, that just shows Fuck. the power of the internet these exactly. days. It's, why it's truly changed the way people do sell business. things, do business, buy things. You I, know, obviously, but like <clears throat> the scalability is tenfold. So something you guys don't see is, you know, we, we plan out these merch drops. Like, okay, we're doing one now. Uh, space it out. We go pretty much every two months about right and uh mike is in the hot seat today I, we haven't touched on that so I, I hate to i hate to grill you too hard right off the bat but for the longest time we would you know have a have a merch shop planned okay so if it's in uh eight weeks we need to have everything done you know six weeks beforehand so then it can all get placed ordered and then we get samples we can you know wear them promote them the whole shebang and mike uh, for the longest time you're getting better at it Mm-hmm. would just dude you would just miss deadline after deadline by like three weeks for these merch drops so i mean it's tough because micah does such a good job and he's he absolutely kills it on the entire drop and it takes a lot of work so you hate to be too hard on the guy but there's if there's a deadline you kind of want to hit it or at least hit close to it and dude it 
would you just not like realize that there was a deadline and just no, try and get like, it I done like around that time or or like what yeah, no i definitely realized it i think that is the worst part you're just like well i just don't get it it's like you're not even close you're just missing it right and so i honestly especially for those at those times i don't even have an excuse for that the biggest thing now is just like i am not just the guy who designs the merch being the merch coordinator is by far more work than being product designer. sourcing yeah. all yeah. that yeah, yeah. Sourcing, talking like, with all these people. oh we got it yeah we got to get these like heat pr- uh, presses for samples and then it's just like well it's going to be this much money and so then i try to like find another good Cheaper, place and if yeah. they're like not good then next merch drop i need to figure out a new place to get those samples things from and and like there's so many moving components yeah Dude, yeah, such and, a and we understand that. We understand that for sure. But, but yeah, as far as like the deadlines, it was just <laughs> like I was. Yeah, I was clearly aware that they were that they were there, and I wasn't like, you know, screw these guys. I I just want to chill. It is kind of your mo, Mike. Oh, just, yeah. You disres- <laughs> disregard deadlines, no matter what the deadline is. Whether it was you look back to your days in school, you I think you had like the record for most tardies. You were you were showing up so late. Mm-hmm. Um. You show up late for this. Back when you had a girlfriend, you show up late to dates. <laughs> you know, everything. You're just... Literally. You're on your own time. It's, a, it's not a good thing. No. I don't... Yeah, I was like, it's it's not a good thing, but that that is... I am on my own so time. So it's not just the merch drop. I mean, at least you're staying on pace with, like... Yeah. You're staying on brand. When do you yeah. think that started? Did that start, like, going to school and just... Yeah, I was high school. Basically, just like... I was like, screw this. I like, think you just High have- school, 7.30 in the morning, like, bro... Would you would you say you have a disregard <laughs> for authority? Uh, yeah. Why? I don't. It probably came from honestly it came from teachers. I think it came from your parents trying to tell you what to do younger than that. Yeah, and I think it was yeah it was tough because like my parents, a lot of that literally came with uh, a curfew. That's mm. why I hated the curfew. I hated it. And, and honestly, that's probably a big part of it. I mean, yeah. you, they, were, they were like, let's do midnight. And then I'm like, well, if I'm going to come home after you guys are sleeping, what's the difference? I was the kid. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I don't think that's the point of a curfew, bro. No, it's, and it's <laughs> not. It's not. And that's what they would obviously Yeah, do, Mike, they just want you to come home so they could chill they with could you. hang out with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bro, you got to be home by 12 because we're trying to hang out. <laughs> That'd be funny. Not because Dude, we don't want you running around back the streets. On it, like, when I did get caught sneak, I would never sneak out. I would only sneak back in. But when I got caught sneaking out, uh, or sne- sorry, sneaking back in, and my dad's like towering over me in the kitchen, <laughs> hits me with the "What are you doing in the silence?" <laughs> I, you, you literally shit yourself, piss yourself, and and gasp right. all at the same time. Let's get into that because you, I mean, your parents were pretty. They're strict, but unstrict is just certain things because you come from a pretty religious family. Let's mm-hmm. let's backtrack a little bit and start from the beginning here. Uh, kind of what what your early years were like because I mean we didn't know you when you were a little kid we met in high school and we'll get into that obviously but but tell us kind of growing up what it was like um pretty much grew up in the country which is good grew up we like moved to the country when I was like four so that's all I really knew and uh yeah like you know going to church going to like Wednesday school that was a big part of it um like tractors basically before i was in school my grandpa was uh retired and he just loves john deere's so me and my grandpa would chill every day and just literally tractors dude he's like what are we gonna do today work on tractors which is weird now because like i'm not super associated with it you should get a tractor but, yeah no i have he, he said, gave me yeah. two of them yeah oh, we got to do a video with it sometime i'll bring it here yeah but uh wait so what age was that that was basically from like five years old Four to five up until you know when I was like ten. Obviously, I was in school. You were kind point, of a you were kind of a farm boy. Yeah, yeah. It's like that's that's just all I did. You know. Oh, can I? I lit. Oh, this is funny. I remember asking my grandpa if I could mow, and I was like yeah, six <laughs> years old, and he's just like, I ah, yeah, I don't know, I don't know if you should be turning the blades on. Let, how about this? You can drive the mower in a straight line up and down the lawn, and I'll let you mow. And he did. I like <laughs> proved him. And then I, you know, shortly after, I was like, okay, this isn't all it's cracked up. To me, but <laughs> yeah, is it? You still funny? love mowing? You still want to mow? I, yeah. yeah. Well, I had a mowing business when I was, and that was when I, I never knew that. Yeah, what? Yeah. yeah. When okay. I was like, I mean, it was like I had like five lawns, 
but that would be considered as a business. I definitely didn't have good an LLC. Good for you, dude. But I was like, as a kid, yeah, that's yeah. good. Five I was lawns. Like Thirteen, and I had like I mowed a cemetery, which everyone's like tripping about that. Why do you mow a cemetery? Isn't that sketchy? I was like, I don't mow it at night <laughs> or anything. <laughs> and then it was weird because my ancestors are in that, so it was a little weird. But and then I mowed like my mom's bank and a couple of apartments. So that was that was good. I do love mowing. Who was driving you around for that? My mom. Really? Well, the the yeah, honestly, my mom. And then the uh, the cemetery, I would just drive the mower from my house. But yeah, lots of lots of farm stuff growing yeah. up. Up until I got my license, then I spent a lot more time in town. So where did it turn from you being like a country farm boy into like the flat brim skater that, boy that hmm. that that you were when Skinny I met you? Skinny jean wearing. Yeah, yeah. I would say it definitely. It all depends on your friends. Pretty much what you do in high school is dependent on who you're hanging out with, but. Uh, skateboarding. So how did you fall into that friend group versus like the country boy friend group? Like I never grew up wanting a truck. Like, you know, my, for my 16th birthday, I was like, I don't want a truck, you know, which most country boys, they're like, I want a truck. I want a Silverado, you know? Yeah. Uh, but Silverado. yeah, I start, but before I had my license, I started skateboarding and that was my way of getting around town. So then you just adopt that skinny jean, flat brim, skate shoes wearing lifestyle. It is amazing how your current friend group like dictates who you are as a person when it, you're younger and as you're getting older too. It does. I, yeah. I think the story of you becoming friends with us is incredibly interesting. Yeah. So basically I, uh, broke my foot. How old were you? 2013. I was like 17. I broke my foot. We, me and my buddy Pete rolled a Ranger and you know, classic, you put your foot out or your hand or hopefully not your head. Uh, but the roll cage crushes it crushes it i like broke all my toes except for my big toe and i was in like a wheelchair for like a couple weeks too it was bad uh and then i remember calling jake up or jake called me up because all my friends weren't hanging out with me because i was crippled which it wasn't it's not that deep you know i was just at home playing call of duty and they were like well there's not much we can do with you since we were always like skateboarding and snowboarding and so then i called jake and he's Jake like, Sherbrooke. Yeah, Jake Sherbrooke. And he's, uh, yeah, dude, I'm at my dad's playing Mortal Kombat right now, <laughs> like eating ice cream sticks. But you guys weren't that good of friends. No, I had just You'd met, met like him one at or two basketball like, games, yeah. which is shit. like the most Jake thing ever. Yeah. Like, yeah. oh, yeah, come on over. We're going to hang out. Like, <laughs> it really is. Yeah, he was, uh, I met him at a couple of basketball games and he was just like stoked. He's just like, dude, I heard you're Mike Sandman from all, you know, like, I don't know how you he really had a reputation. You were a Viner. Bro. Yeah, he was a Viner. You were a Viner. I knew you up from Vine funny. before I met you. Yeah. A bunch of people at Ben's school knew me from Vine, which is honestly, I par for the course now that we're, uh, social media, but he had, he had like what? 2,500 like 2, followers. Yeah. So yeah. Was like, I remember that being so huge at the time yeah, though. Yeah. I was like, damn. So then the funny thing is that night that I like went and hung out with Jake, we made vines. <laughs> Super weird. Jake probably was just trying to get some cloud off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After that, I remember he's just like, well, I know your foot's broken, but like if it heals up soon, we could like duct tape your boot up or something. We could go snowmobiling. I'm like, sure. Yeah, I'm down. And that's what we did. And then he was like, yeah, my buddies want to ride with you. And it was all of you guys, I don't know if you were with at the time, but basically all the Sea Boys we were, were the with snowmobiling. Because yeah. we had a pretty, uh, our, the group was pretty tight at that point. Yeah, you know, me, yeah. Ken, Micah, CJ, and not, Jake. Well, not me at the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. But I roll in. Ryan, I was Ryan. there too, Ryan, dude. Ryan too, <laughs> Ignore that. But fucked all that up. <laughs> the other cool thing was I met you, all you guys in the Cormorant store. Like that, I don't know. That just makes it cool to me. I walk in the Cormorant store. I see Ken. And keep in mind, I go to school with him. And at the time, <laughs> at the time, he's Grant. I, I'm like, oh, that's Grant. What's up, dude? And we, we weren't friends in high school. We were just acquaintances. And so I saw him, and then I see Ben, and he's like four foot one. And I see Ryan, and I'm like, all right, cool, let's go sledding. And like, I remember, yeah, you, all you guys had pretty nice snowmobiles, so I was pretty intimidated by that. But uh, shortly after that, I was like, well, that was really fun. I really like these guys. And that's what it's like to find la friends at the lake, obviously. You know, there's no one around. So I was just like, this is great. I found friends who like to snowmobile around the lake. And then after that, uh, everyone wanted to go, or Ryan wanted to go snowmobiling, but no one else did want, wanted to or could or whatever. And so Ryan asked me to. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't, we don't know each other, but I'm down. And then, honestly, from there, it was history. Yeah, man. You really fit with the group dynamic. Yeah. And then, I, I, yeah, as soon as I realized that you guys like action sports, I was, like, sold. We got but, you into dirt biking. Yeah. Actually, that's crazy, too. I had never ridden a dirt bike besides, like, once or twice before I started hanging out with you guys. So, before? 
I hate to shit. I'm, I, I don't want to shit on your old friends, but like it was a, they weren't going down a good path, right? No. And so do you attribute, wh- where do you think that you would be right now if you would have never met us and you would have stayed in that same friend group? Because when you started hanging out with us, you kind of, you kind of ditched that group, right? Mm-hmm. Your mom even says that uh, before you met us, you were, you were kind of going down the wrong path. I think, especially where some of those those guys are now, is like, I think I would just be working, you know, I hate to overuse this, but like working nine to five, like I'd still be very content because I'm a, I'm a content, uh, ha- optimistic, happy person, but it wouldn't be uh, much. Yeah, not even that though. It was like just the, the choices that they're making and one of them's dead now because of drugs. That, yeah, like one of my best friends for a long time and he wasn't, that was almost like almost two different friend groups. Um, but yeah, one of my buddies who I was friends with for a long time, who was easily the worst, you know, like the worst, I, I don't mean to, uh, speak bad on his name, but right. it, it, things, things were just toxic. And I remember like canning that friendship and I was, I never, I was so happy. And then, yeah, like years later he OD'd, which is insane. So do I think Sad I'd be too. anywhere near that path? Absolutely not. But but it would be as far as a career path and, and maybe like my overall outlook on life would be a lot different. What did you see yourself doing? Like at that point in your life, what did you want to do? Around when I was like 16, I remember uh, <laughs> my mom would go to Bible study and then we'd go to the, this person's house from our church and he was a mechanical engineer. So he had dirt bikes and snowmobiles and all this. And I was just like, oh, so you got to be a mechanical engineer and you can... You can afford all these nice toys and like, and then he was in the power sports industry. I forget where he worked, but, uh, so I was like, I want to be a mechanical engineer. And then I met you guys and I was still stuck on that. I was like, sweet snowmobiles, love snowmobiles. And then I applied to the national guard. <laughs> Dude, that's so right. a funny story. The <laughs> yeah. Or, or I should say they reach out to me and then I was like, well, shit, if I can pay for college, like, and, it, and I know people that have done it and that have finished it. There's like a lot it, of our friends. Yeah. Are. Yeah. It's not, it's not that crazy, but looking back, if it were me, it's crazy. Right. So yeah. what happened now, Mike, is you applied and you, you, you tried to go through with it to yeah, join so the like, national sure. guard. And they make it very easy. Cause they literally beg Extremely you easy. to join. They beg you. And so then I remember halfway through that, uh, they, the Na- uh, air national guard reached out to me and they're like, they are literally like, Hey, army national guard is like staying in a tent and air national guards like staying in a five-star hotel. That's literally what they told me. These guys want everybody and anybody. <laughs> so then, anyway, I was like, all right, cool. Well, if, if you're not lying, Air National Guard, cool, I'll apply. And then I applied and filled out all the medical questions, and I said that I had asthma because I do, but it's very minor, like not severe. I've never seen you have an inhaler no. or need an inhaler. Yeah, it's basically like if I overexert myself in the winter, I'll get a little wheezy. That's about it. Yeah. Wee- and wee- Yeah. <laughs> wheezy, baby. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and so I applied and like I, I said that and they're like oh you know that could be a problem and then I was like well let me know if it is like I'll do some physical tests or some breathing tests I don't know what goes into it but no I don't even need it I don't know it's no big deal and they're like yeah it might be a big deal <laughs> and so they like push me around for like three months you know every month I'd be like hey could I get an answer like I need to know if I'm going to basic because I basically missed the summer basic which I'm glad I wouldn't have gone because it would have been really hot but uh, I come two weeks before you're supposed to basically like be starting classes, August, whatever. They're like, I'm like, can I have an answer? Yes or no? Like, I don't, you know, it seemed very unprofessional. <laughs> and then yeah. they they're, they're always like, I don't want to tell them, you tell them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're like, pass them That could yeah. have been what it was. And so then they're just like, you didn't, you didn't make her. And I was Mike. like, that's fine, but <laughs> no, what the dude, there, you, I just picture all of them standing in like a conference room with funny. a picture of just <laughs> you with your flat <laughs> room and like yeah, flippy <laughs> hair and you're just in your purple skinny jeans <laughs> standing there and they're like, all right, seriously, we take everyone, but do <laughs> we want this guy? Yeah, you're, you've got, you are literally the only person I've ever heard of in the history of ever that got to turned down by the national guard and they're then begged have, they're gonna have, beg to get in <laughs> and they still said no they didn't want you dude they would go to they would go to a draft before they made my, they, before they put Mike's Micah like, in there no seriously like i'm, I'm ready to fight i, I want to serve my country like no no you can't, you can't do it that'd be a funny skit of them just looking at me and they're like we can't who's gonna tell them but we can't let this guy in We've kind of had that joke going for even in our content though too like like we'll be like all right who wants to do the the stunt or whatever and then everyone's kind of quiet and mike's like i'll do it and then we're like 
All right, anyone else? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, the anyone want to do the yeah, stunt? Is there anyone is else? Anyone. Fine. I, all right. I guess Ben, you're gonna have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even remember that whole story until like a couple months ago, no. but we've been doing that <laughs> for the past like four years, dude. Uh, all I have to say is, think how much different your life. I feel yeah. so blessed that yeah. I didn't get in. Like, screw that, man. But respect to everyone that's in it, though. Obviously. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. That's, yeah, it was like, it's like no hate. I'm just glad for my that. life that it didn't work out. <laughs> so then I guess the, the the way it took a turn in a really good way really fast was that I go to a community college because at this time I'm like, well, I can't enroll in a university. And, like, at that point I was accepted at NDSU, but I, I still couldn't have enrolled. They, they just don't work like that. But you can go to a community college and enroll and schedule your classes in all in one day. So I was like, cool, I'll do that. And then we go there and they have like their full list of professions. And I was like, can you imagine just showing up <laughs> to college? Because there's no generals there really. Showing up to college and just being like, all right, pick one. That's you know, what you did? Pretty much. Like the night before. It Actually, the most Micah this? thing ever. You're That's like the most Micah this? thing I've ever no. heard, bro. You it just you, you procrastinate and you put everything off until the last minute. And you're like, Whoa. Oh, Whoa. I need a career. Whoa. It wasn't his fault. It was not procrastination. That That, that is true. Not procrastination. Anyway. Uh, wh- That's wh- a one time it wasn't. That's true. That's true. Okay. My so bad, then my I, uh, Sorry. Uh, I'm looking and... And I see like graphic design and then I hear they have a really good graphic design program. I'm like, well, this looks a lot more fun than accounting. It looks a lot more fun than being a nurse, even though the nurses program is really good and you get paid really well doing that. But graphic design I picked and then they're like, you I need can to- see you being a nurse now that you say no, that. I can I, can yeah. you guys picture that? Michael walking in. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. So here's, here's your ointment. <laughs> <laughs> Rub it on some old lady. <laughs> All right, I'm going to come back and check on you in 20 minutes. Rise the, ring the bell if you have any issues. <laughs> okay, so you go, you so, you become a graphic designer, or you yeah, start the literally the in course. a day. I became, no. <laughs> but I remember them Decided being his like, whole future. and keep in mind, community college was cheap, but I remember them being like, you need a MacBook. And I was like, do I have to? Because at that time, I just was like anti-Apple because they were so expensive. And I still am anti-Apple because... It was the status quo. You've yeah. always gone against the status quo. You don't give a fuck about how expensive something is or if it's like supposedly nice. You just like care about getting the job done. Yeah, dude. So I bought... I like spent my entire grad money on the MacBook. And then that was the MacBook that we like... Built the company. Kind of <laughs> built the company on. It yeah. is so crazy. Was the, I, and, and it worked for five years. So, like, I never regretted it after that. Did graphic design. And then once we started doing all this, it was perfect. Couldn't have been more perfect. It was like the stars all aligned. You have made the most out of your two-year degree on so many levels, dude. Yeah. Like, can you... Did you ever even imagine the amount of success you would you would create from that degree dude no. like I, did you even comprehend that because most people getting a like a trade job like that they can maybe picture themselves starting their own business one day but it's like you've been out of college for five years and the amount of things that you've done with that degree is insane yeah think right. about how many designs you've made that are on t-shirts around the world bro yeah and that's obviously thousands of like, like a hundred thousand t-shirts but around the world. It's dude. sick that I would now I'd feel comfortable like legit teaching other people, not necessarily graphic design, but teaching them what they can do with it. Like I remember when you know the people come into the classroom and they're like freelancers and they were talking to us and I was like, this is cool, but I can't see myself doing this in the near future. Like I feel like I got to learn a lot, and then I did because you're thrown through the flames, look which we all were. That's the best part about everything that we've ever done is basically like we were thrown into the flames what do we got going on here sorry this is what do we got going on i didn't here? expect the oj can it's I all good. No, no, no. why don't you why don't you tell the uh, audience what you're making this is called a beer mosa so you we normally drink these in the morning as terrible as that sounds uh <laughs> normally i love the normally not normally yeah. no Only like on, on a week saturday get up and Only going you know um but so you like normally bush you can do cores but then you just you pour a little <laughs> bit of orange juice in it. and it it's like a instead of like a mimosa, it's like a man mosa. Mimosa, you know. Not Believe that. it or not, it's really good. Yeah, it's a it's phenomenal like combo. Fantastic. Actually. actually, super weird combo. Uh, got like four dudes when I was at the corn run and just 
Or the other weekend. <laughs> were you guys all, were well, all of us were, were you sitting in a hot tub? No, no. I, but I, I turned them on to the... Oh, you turned turn four them dudes on? on? Oh! oh. Yeah, sorry. I mean, they were rock hard sitting there drinking <laughs> these beer mosas. They were fucking... Because they're good. They're good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that's a really good point, Ben. Would you have ever dreamed that your designs would be getting worn all over the world? You know? I mean... In sitting there in class learning how to do something I would have never shit. even thought of. Exactly. Yeah. I, I almost feel like uh, and, and your mindset has changed over the years. It's like the more you've hung around us. Um, and, and I will say, like, like Ben and I especially, we, we, like, always have really aimed and, like, shot really high up, I would say. Like, you know, we've always aimed for, for the stars. And the, the more you hung around us, I'd say, like, your mindset – has almost changed. It, I don't know. Maybe I'm. I think yeah, you know, it was cocky it, saying for that, the record. It was it was hanging around you guys, but it was meeting all of your parents. Yeah, that's what it was. Really, my, none of. I mean, and my parents did just fine, but uh, they didn't own their own business. You know, they they worked for someone and they hustled, and but they never could scale it anywhere. And so then I saw all of your parents, and I was like, every single one of their parents own a business, and I want that. That's all I want. That's all I want. I want to do. Yeah, I mean, you know, American dream sort of thing. Hey Grant, I don't want to skip too far ahead here, but uh, on on the topic of that, what was your what was your opinion on making a lot of money? Uh, Did you care about it? Yeah, because a lot of people think like it's not um, it's not good to make a lot of money. It's it's like good to make enough to sustain your yeah. your livelihood, and like that's all you need. And people think that like people that make a lot of money are just like arrogant assholes. And I mean, some are, but I mean, everyone's different. Some poor people are the happiest people in the world. Some right. poor people are depressed, you know, whatever, did you, or whatever. Did you want to make a lot of money? Did I wanted, be, no, wanna I wanted rich? to be, honestly, no. I wanted the the little middle things, like my family never took vacations. And I just saw, like, P, just a simple thing as taking your family to Florida. I'm like, how hard can that be? That'd be how, so fun, you know. How much money could that possibly cost if we just, like, you know. So I want to do just stuff like that. Yeah, just I have money to go on vacation and then not go, oh, we're not going to get a, like, this is how my family was, but, you know, we're not going to get a pop when we go out to drink or a soda, whatever you want to call it. You know, we get waters to save money. I was like, screw right. that. Like, I want to go out to eat and get what I want. I don't need to get the full and young, but. I think they almost, uh, would you agree that they, they live very much so, they don't live beyond their their means, you know, or needs. Mm -hmm. It's like. Uh, would you say the the number one priority in your family still, and also obviously growing up, was God? Yeah, you know, and 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 church and yeah. religion, community, family, all that stuff, which is all really good. But uh, yeah, I mean, that was your guys' main thing. Yeah, yeah, we didn't need to do anything too crazy. Well, especially with like material possessions. Right, they didn't care about that. Yeah, they're like, which it, it, none of it does really matter. It it doesn't. Yeah, it really doesn't. So th I mean, and that's kind of where I am like right now. It's like. Remember someone goes, when are you going to buy your, you know, $100,000 car? I'm like, shit, I don't know, man. I you mean, don't care about that shit. I'm gonna, but like, I don't know what it is. I don't know when it's going to be. Like, I'm happy with the Subi, dude. But I can relate to that. Like, for one, your Subaru is like so sick. You got that thing for, what was it, 10 grand? 10 grand. Put How the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> Wait, but put another <laughs> 10 grand into it. That's true. But still, Mike, I remember yeah. when we went there, it was just me and you to buy it. And I was like, if you don't buy this, I'm going to buy it. It was but, sick. But it's just, it's so funny because you could have bought a lot of other vehicles besides that. And you could have uh, fucking times 10 the value of that. I'd say you care the least out of everyone by far about making a lot of money. You just. Yeah. yeah. Which I yeah I was like which I don't which want to be mistaken great, dude. as good for you which I don't want to be mistaken as not, not cheap. wanting to hustle it's not that you're cheap but, you're not cheap but uh, yeah which also uh, and another thing to be said is like I don't want to skip the the, the build up I don't want to skip the build up skip the the work up so like I mean and this isn't uh, like a hit at you guys but like Ben for example has a brand new WRX sitting. It, you know, in in the we surprised you with it. It was it was amazing. Mm. You have a brand new WRX. That's because your family loves you and they're able to provide for you. Yeah. And so anyway, I wanted that WRX that I never had. If I just skipped that, then I instantly would be like, why would I get it? You know. So anyway, I'm just like taking it by levels, I guess. If that right. makes sense. If I were to go buy, I don't know, a, a Corvette or something or a GTR, uh, I'd just be like forever 
Yeah, I wouldn't want Tainted. that. Du- I wouldn't want that WX ever. That's true. I wouldn't. Do you think that you have everything you need right now? You have enough money in your bank account. You have a house. You, no, you've got like every that. toy that you can. <laughs> For could. the record, the only thing I don't have right now is a lot of money in my bank account. Because you from buy the, so <laughs> much stuff. From the house. From the house. But, yeah, I have every toy that I could literally ever want. But there's always new ones that, like, <laughs> you know. But I definitely have the most toys out of all you guys. Oh, yeah, I know. You got a ton of shit. Yeah. A lot of stuff. This is fun. What, I, like, for dirt one, bike, snow bike, two snowmobiles, jet ski, I mean, two cars. Four-wheeler. Four wheeler, <laughs> when I, a pit bike, a pit bike, yeah. The, oh uh, no, no, another ranger, yeah, ranger. That's cheese, right. yeah. yeah. The way you're living though, Mike, honestly, like, that's the right way to live. And I've told you this off camera many a times because we always get into it. Maybe like, because Ben and I are very like, I'd say business oriented. Like we look at it like, is this making a profit? If it's not, then we cut it. You know, mm-hmm. and and you look at it as. Is this a good time? And that's the the honestly the the better way to best live. Best way to look at it. it best is. way, and then the fact that we're able to mesh we that blend in, it mesh exactly. that into one thing is, is exactly pretty great. Yeah, it is interesting how how different we are, but how well we work together. Because me, you, <clears throat> and CJ like could not be more polar opposites, honestly. But it just works, and, and we it do butt heads a lot too, though. Yeah. It keeps Micah in line. Of looking forward and yeah. doing stuff. And it also keeps you two in line sometimes. Like, Michael will check your guys' decisions and be like, hey, no, we should do this for this reason. And I think it's what makes our group work is the five totally different attitudes it towards is. so many things. And that's why we work. No, 100%. Yeah, Mike, Mike definitely keeps us grounded. Yeah, like exactly. Level-headed. Because, yeah. dude, like, at the end of the day, you have so many things to have an ego about. You know, everything that everything, dude, your, your world is crazy. Right. And anyone that has a brain can look at that and respect that. But do you, you have no ego. You have, you have nothing that you brag about or you, you've got a chip on your shoulder when you're talking to someone. It is pretty amazing. It's funny when I do feel like a little bit of an ego coming on, I almost feel like there's like a monster inside. You check yourself. (laughs) Yeah. Well, that's good, Mike. Hopefully you stay that way. Your ego monster is like this tall (laughs) and like literally anybody else's is like up here. Whenever he grows, I'm like, no, you know, I feel like, uh, I don't, and I've never told you this before, but if it wasn't, if you weren't cut, you know, obviously tied in with all of us tied in with the business, you know, you're making videos, all that. I feel like you would be like traveling the world in your blue van <laughs> before we wrecked it. I mean, you'd yeah, be traveling it the world, be the blue van, but it would. You'd be traveling the world, living very minimally, just meeting new people, hanging out, chilling. Yeah, and by minimally, would you agree with that? Yes, but but by minimally, there's like two definitions of that. There's like, you know, you live minimally, Mike. Yeah, 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 but like. I want to live comfortably minimally, and you need money to live comfortably minimally. If that makes sense. There's minimally like you're eating sandwiches on the road, and you're showering like once every three days. And I was like, nah. Like if if you wanted to grab a hotel, and you wanted to like, I don't know. I don't know yeah. if you'd do that though, because if you were really out there doing it, you'd be like, eh, I can just sleep in my van. But also like if I were to travel like that in a van, I would want to be making content, and in the end, want to be making money from that content. Like, let's say at 21, you, it doesn't take much to travel a country in a van if you have the van already. Like, it legit, you could live, you could travel the whole United States probably for like 10 grand, you know, and take months off. Right. But I don't really want to do that. Right. But you you want to Obviously, like, right now, it's not the time. Yeah, not at all. But I mean, uh, that's it's funny you say that because I would love to do I, that. I know you, you would. But the weird thing is, is, as time goes on and you like get a girlfriend, you need to have... Right. You, you got to have a girlfriend that's down for that. I would imagine hmm. that... Uh, the next girlfriend you find would probably be down for that. I literally almost forget that you had a girlfriend. I feel like you've been single for so much longer than nine months at this point, and you just started hitting the market. Like smacking it, dude. Yeah, I <laughs> know. <laughs> really hitting the market. Really, not hard. really though. I'm just like being single. Like, I would not consider myself a ladies' man. I don't know, Mike. Not that I just what I've I been wouldn't, saying, dude. dude you. You're a magnet. No, dude. You are a bit of a magnet. I, I almost think you can't that. get out of your own way on that. Bro, I, I, I actually, think it's because... Should we circle back around to my incredible ability to be friend-zoned in high school? Mm. Mm. And the worst part is there's varying levels of it, but, like, oh, my gosh, dude. I 
so many there's so many there's so many nice pretty girls in my high school and i somehow was best friends with all of them you think they might have been misreading you? <laughs> yeah <laughs> that, uh, maybe we didn't maybe. even touch on that no, no we did we touched think. on the first podcast yeah we did no, yes, yeah, so I was gay in high school. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't actually no, gay, but I, I thought he was gay the first time I met but, him. Yeah, dude, I was. It was just funny. Like I and it, you just don't pull girls if they think you're in the friend zone, and then other girls are like, "Oh yeah." He's Nowadays nice. it's quite o- the opposite. You though, just Mike. gotta avoid the friend zone at what all. What do you think costs. it is? It's because whenever there's any girls around us, whether it's our girlfriend's friends or whatever, you know, it's like there's only two single options, so it makes it nice for you. I mean, that's it's quite the setup. That is true. <laughs> Um, yeah, if there's a, a group of girls around us, there's only, like, two people to choose from. I'd say we're a pretty good time, too, so, I, like, they're enjoying themselves. They're like, man, I'd like to come back. This is almost like a PSA, like, if we're, like, you just got to have a really good time and don't over, as soon as you're, like, that girl's really cute, I want to, like, start moving in, uh, as throws soon as you off. start putting an ultimatum mm-hmm. on it, throws or it whatever, off. whatever, uh, yeah, throws it off, they just don't be like yourself. That. Dude, Mike, you Snapchat more girls than I, anyone I know, though. Really? Yeah, bro. You've got like 25 on the hook at one time. That is an exaggeration. <laughs> but not far <laughs> off. I but agree. It's, it's no, it close goes in to waves. that, dude. It's it goes fucked. in waves. So also, many. dude, it's crazy. Like, what? what is, what? I mean, this is kind of more of a Gen Z thing, but like, what is a high snap score? I know you guys don't even keep track of that, but I what is? You literally no general. idea. Yeah. I'd say everyone says like a million is a super, like you a hoe if you have a million uh, snaps. Do you have score. a million? No. What do you have? I just crossed uh, 600K, which I think is a lot. Uh, <laughs> I got 120. Decent. Yeah, dude. I'm but also, always I've, I've had Snapchat since it came out. Oh, that was another really, really funny thing. Dude, when I was the first time I ever met Jake at the Lake Park basketball game, he comes up to me and goes, dude, so you got to get this app. It's called Snapchat. And keep in mind, this is like 2012. I don't know, whenever it came out. And he was like, you got to get this app, dude. Um so basically you just send pictures it's it's mostly meant to send nudes you just like send pictures <laughs> and they just disappear that so is like, kind of what it was actually it initially was, meant for it w- i mean and i don't know if it was meant for that but that's what it was used, used for. no it was that was the, so, the initial concept of and it. i remember downloading it and it was just him and then this one other girl that i was friends with that had it and that was it i was just like man well no one uses this well thank app. god you picked a good username mike <laughs> no yeah, kidding. Seriously. So <laughs> many people just pick terrible <laughs> Snapchat usernames because right. no one had it. Or you just I've always you like, just I've always really liked CJ's. Just CJ, CJ Lotzer, one, one, two, three, four. four. <laughs> <laughs> hey, CJ, CJ Lotzer one two three was already taken, and all the <laughs> ones before that. Wait, yeah, that's you still your username? Yeah. yeah. Well, what the? Can yeah, you change it? Yeah. You can't. You and also, get, I don't yeah, use yeah. Snapchat. I'm not like uh, no offense, Whoa. but I feel like that's for little kids. Yeah. And yeah. like now that Instagram has stories, why am I going to post a Snapchat story? But like I live on Snapchat. Like I post. Yeah, no, because you got a lot Instagram. of girls. You got to snap back. No, but I'm saying on my stories too. Like if I put promos, like new video, I yeah. But I built my Snapchat audience. Right, and I still could do that, but I just don't see the point because you could just post it right to your yeah. Instagram and like stay on Instagram. Like I'd rather just have my Instagram pop in. Leave Snapchat to Mike and I. Yeah, you guys got it. Yeah, Ryan, um, Ryan's got me up, uh, got my back on this at least. I just like Snapchat. So you were graduated out of college, you know, while some of us were completing it or trying to complete it, and we had that shitty ass trap house, college house that we were running the business out of. That was like, I feel like those were some nice, nice times for you. Yeah, absolutely. You, yeah, you like, weren't, you were just a full time working on the business, but it wasn't like super serious yet. So it was it like, you're hanging out, you had everything you needed, but like, but you're I still, chilling. Yeah, being able to live the college life, which like, it didn't feel weird. It didn't feel like I was like some old graduated person. Cause at the same, I had graduated earlier than you guys, even though you were younger than me. But uh, yeah, I got to like live the college life, but I didn't have to waste my time on fucking homework i got to no you're just partying well no 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 no. i was partying (laughs) with with all you guys and then when you guys had to do homework and go to class i got to work on actual shit we had so many side gigs back then too though yeah yeah i mean we were just trying to make money any which way we could those were building years dude we did anything we had our fingers in so much stuff and i don't think we were doing anything well no No. we had the freaking we were doing it better than uh Anyone else? Anyone else? They're not doing it. Because we were just yeah. doing it. Yeah. Honestly, doing it. we weren't thinking into anything. We were just doing it. Uh, yeah. Which I don't know if that's good or bad, but building bricks or brick brick by brick Gosh, or whatever dude. the fuck brick, the saying is. Brick by brick, yeah. baby. So Ken's brother Cody is an arborist. He's got a huge tree pile. 
he cuts down trees. We were like, well, what if we made a subscription-based thing in the summer so that we deliver bundles of firewood to people on the weekends or whenever they want them? Never came to be, but good wood, we good, wood. Call it good wood, good uh, wood. Still might work, like honestly. That. Yeah, still yeah. might work. And then you can elaborate on that. Sell them fucking big Cormorant t-shirts or whatever. Yeah, a bunch of different yeah. side hustles. But yeah, to circle back around, uh, that was that was a great time in my life be- because basically because of that. I was be- able right. to like... Live like a college kid, but actually make mo- you know make money and not waste my time in class. Not that if, when you're in class you're wasting time, but a lot of times it feels, feels like, like it. Feels like it. So, yeah, we we don't have to talk about this if you don't want to, but um, your your dad passed away mm-hmm. during that time. Yeah, yeah, that was tough, and that was like I don't even know. I'm really bad about like dealing with it or talking about it, but he had cancer, and he like kicked it for like three years and then it was kind of one of those things that like wasn't yeah like you're just not going to come out of but i would say the scariest thing out of all that was like the last like two weeks like if you've ever seen anybody with cancer like he looked like a zombie like he didn't look like my dad anymore Mm -hmm. like crazy crazy i was like this is terrifying but uh yeah it was it was sad how did you cope with that i don't know that's the thing. Like I, you know, I had you guys as like I'm right. not, I'm not, you know, I'm not much of a crier. I think like I just coped with it by you just having you guys, honestly. Really. Like just I'm like, man, I was so happy with what we were doing and so happy that it was successful and so happy to staying be on busy. YouTube and staying busy that I was like, oh, this is if I wasn't doing this, I don't I would be in rough shape too at the time. Yeah. Cuz I mean you, I mean, I always say this, but you are actually the happiest person I know. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I do remember uh, talking to you about it at the time, and I remember you, you mentioning to me, and you, you even said this up there at his funeral. You said there, there's, uh, like, so much comfort in, you know, knowing that he is with God now and, like, mm-hmm. just just the faith that your family has and. Yeah, and you I know. think, well, yeah, that honestly is a big part of it, too, to elaborate it on. It was very, like, your whole family was, I don't know, just, they, they were so calm about it. Yeah, I was like, so that was a big part of it. It's kind of just, like, not, I don't know, not just being, like, yeah, sending good energy to, to you, right. Dad, you know? Like, it, I'm not saying that's all false, but I was just like, no, nah, I mean, it, it feels real, I guess. But it is crazy that we had time to prepare, you know? Right. Like, that is a huge part. Because I remember... Part. You, you were able to, like, kind of be, like, accept, like, this is going to happen. Because I think shortly after that, not to make the story any more dark, and, and we weren't too close later on in life, but me and uh, he was, my parents were his god parents. But uh, me and my, like, childhood best friend, shortly after that, passed away in a car accident. And I was, like, fucked up from that. I was, like, crying, and I was just like, well, why wasn't I like this with my dad? Because it was unexpected. So there's... Something to be said there, like unexpected death. Whew. I that remember you told me that you were like almost at a bit of peace because you knew that he was in a better place. You're yeah. like, he's not suffering anymore and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, he, he was like suffering. It was bad. So uh, positive note of that, like right, I mean, shortly before that, like no, he passed away in December and in November we went on an elk hunting yep. trip. Oh man, we didn't eat, we didn't get an elk, but it was like the best. It was like the best, and he was having a really tough time getting around. But like it was like, we shot some mule deer, and uh, if I wouldn't have had that experience with him, that would have been really tough. But you know, just having some closing experience because like you guys know, like I don't spend a ton of time with my family. I'm, I'm bad about that. I don't know what it is. I don't, I love them just the same, but so bad about that. We're all pretty pretty bad about it. But yeah, you I mean you. You're just busy. And again, it comes down to like your guys' families all live close by and five yours minutes is away. What, 30, 25? Mm, yeah. Yeah. So it makes a little bit longer of a trip. No real excuse, but yeah. Do you, and uh, they live on a gravel road, so I'm not trying to get my car dirty. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, uh, do you have any like advice for someone that, like, I'm sure that out of, I'm sure there's plenty actually of kids that are probably listening to this right now that are in a similar situation to you? At that time. Yeah, I would say it would circle back around to what I said about having you guys. You got to have, and if you, that's the thing. If you don't have good friends, then I, I like, 
I don't know what to Wouldn't you say, say just something to, to focus on? Yeah, yeah, something to focus on. Stay busy? Yeah, for sure that. But also, like, the friend group to me is the most important. Even if I don't have to, like, talk about it with you guys, just knowing that, like, like I, there's so many people I know that, like, just don't have a friend to call. Or they're like, I hope I you know, I hope my friend, my one friend is available this weekend so we can hang out. I'm like, it's not like that. Mm-hmm. Like I could literally show up at any of your doorsteps at any time. But even five years ago, I could have done that. What about at like, if they don't have any friends that they feel they can reach out to? Yeah. Then I guess like stay busy. Um, and just cherish that, that bit of time that you had before that. Yeah. I mean, and it's definitely, yeah, it was like, it's okay to cry about it. Cry as much as you want, but don't, you got to like move on I, and this that sounds really really insensitive but like time heals like you can't live in the like, despair forever and that comes true, to me being like a glass half full type of guy like um it's life but that it's a lot deeper than that but yeah you know like it what what am i supposed to do right exactly Can, there's nothing cancer you can killed do millions of people right so it just happened to be in my family. Luckily, like, have you guys had any of your grandparents pass away or yeah, anything like I've that? I've had a whole, a lot of my, one side of the family has passed away from cancer, actually. That was my only, uh, ch- uh, my only time with it. Other than that, like, I haven't, I haven't dealt with that before. So in that aspect, again, I felt really lucky. Like, now that I'm past that and and over and and happy now i felt really lucky i was like man i'm glad that that was the only thing i really had to deal with i think part of what reason i mean just right there you kind of proved it you always stay positive no matter what i think that's yeah the biggest takeaway whatever we're doing yeah you always stay positive some everything could be going wrong but well i mean we still got this you know i'd be like yeah but we need this you're like but i mean what are you gonna do yeah you think he'd uh, you think he'd be proud of what you've done to the Beamer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The BMW yeah, was would. your dad's car. Yeah, that was and cool. I remember my mom. He she basically gave it to me. I I sold my Subi that so I could buy it from her, and then she I paid like five grand, and I'm like, I'll get you the rest of the money soon. And then she's like, ah, I'll just gift the rest to you. And then I'm like, I sold my like my boy for this but now yeah. you got the real car that yeah. you wanted so uh yeah that was his as far car as the goes. it was like dude it was also funny like you know i think we are tainted now but like even at the time when my dad got that car like we were doing sea boys right and he loved that thing for no particular reason besides like cool i got a cool car now yeah and i'm like dad this, car, a cool this car. car ain't cool it is but uh but now it means a lot more obviously right it's got sentimental value to yeah it. so i'll probably keep that forever hopefully. forever yeah. yeah well i think you'd i think you'd be really proud of the car but also everything else you've done i remember I, that was the worst part i never got many encounters with him uh where we were out walking with fans or like when there was fans but we were at steamer hill which is coming up labor day but anyway a bunch of tractors <laughs> and uh this kid comes up to me asked for a picture and he was just like <laughs> That guy, so he just, out of the blue, just recognized you? And I'm like, if only he could see that now. now or even yeah. if he could see that in a different, I mean, uh, I'm like, it happens all the time. Just think we had like but, probably 100,000 But at the time, at it didn't, time. yeah. Maybe even less. Yeah, so he was dumbfounded by that. And really? Was, yeah. He was like, they just recognize you? I just, that's <laughs> crazy. Because I, I think I'm also carrying out kind of, my dad was like on the radio. He did like a bunch of radio stuff and he was like a car salesman, so... He definitely was the type of person that wanted like everyone's praise, but not, you know, not in a cocky way, but he just loved knowing everybody. And so then when he found out, I remember when he was like, you should, you guys should do an ad on the radio. I was just like, nah, <laughs> this, this is worldwide, but uh, same kind of premise. He also uh, tried to do politics for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you're right. He did. And you put what? a fucking sticker on a <laughs> turtle. I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I, was I was just putting a bunch of his stickers. This is funny, but so dumb. But I only accredit this because I was young. I was like, you probably do it today, too. No, because I know how I wouldn't make that mistake again because I didn't realize how dumb it was. But anyway, gives us a bunch of stickers, you know, Paul Sandman for state representative. We're putting them all over and it's great. And then me, me and the one shithead friend that I had. Put it on a dead turtle. Like, why? 
Why? What a marketing scheme <laughs> yeah. they got there. Like, but like, they <laughs> clearly was not thinking. <laughs> to be fair, I though, see that you, dead you, tone. I'm voting for Paul. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, you were young. You were, you were 19 years but, old. Yeah. yeah, he was just a little kid. You yeah, gotta no, give him I a break, you like, guys. I just remember that he was just like, he, he literally read me out for I'm that. Sure, He's like, yeah. you dumb, dude. Why would you do that? <laughs> But other than that, yeah. So did somebody find the turtle and yeah, like take a picture you get of it? Or, or how did you get yeah, narked yeah, on? Yeah, someone so saw he it. didn't even see no, it. No, no. Oh, someone man, saw it and worse. then like was like, hey, I saw your sticker on this. And it was kind of off-putting. Oh. And I was like, man. How did he know it was you? Because who else? Who else is <laughs> who dumb else enough is to putting do that? stickers on turtles, dude? <laughs> but it, I think the funniest part of him doing running for state representative was we, would, we had to be in all of the local little town uh, parades. We were, I was in like 15 parades that summer with him. <laughs> and I was like, this is so weird. You just roll through Main Street of, you know, rink-a-dink town in Minnesota. And then you scoot over to the next one. And then scoot over to the next one. Throw out Tootsie Rolls. Dude, super whack. <laughs> Would you ever use your influence nowadays to follow in his footsteps and carry on the legacy of that? No. I was going to say, no. who do you think is going to vote for this guy? <laughs> could you imagine? But, Mike, you could you could be like the independent party. or No, what? no, that's what he was basically running up against a guy that had been in office for 20 years. Way too long. And he put up a – he got like 33% votes. So that's pretty good. I, dude, yeah. I to answer your question, I think a lot of people would vote for Mike because they'd be like – I know him. I <laughs> No, they'd be like, I don't know what this guy is about because he's – kind of all over the place and he doesn't show up to half of the events <laughs> but i kind of like it he seems real pretty, pretty trusting if you were gonna run Genuine. what would your platform be my uh, the green party no sorry. no i mean like what what would you stand for well, what would be your I big thing my that platform, you're gonna do I'd probably be on myspace <laughs> <laughs> dude i don't know i i don't want to out I, i'm trying to make up something funny so i don't actually like tell you how i really feel but uh, there's a lot of crazy shit going on in this, and I would probably combat all that. I don't know, dude. I don't that was know. a hell of a politician answer, Holy dude. You got a shit, future Mike. in this. Yeah, dude. Roundabout answer. Yeah. Nice. I'd probably fix it all. <laughs> well, yeah. Mike, I think this was uh, this is probably our best hot seat episode mm. thus far. That was really it good, good, man. It I, felt really good, and it was natural. And I really I appreciate you guys uh, being my friends. We appreciate yeah, you. We appreciate being you too, bro. Ours and how, how genuine you are. So, don't change. Stay the same, please. <laughs> no, just I mean, like, don't change. Just improve. Yeah, I mean, still <laughs> improve, but but stay you because we love it. Thank you. So, thank you guys so much for watching and listening. Uh, hit the subscribe button, and we will see you next time.